Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm back. I'm going to make something for Lizzie. I am going to make her feel so bad about taking me that maybe she just either offs herself or we make it work. You know, there's probably two options. I don't think she'll kill me. She doesn't want to kill me. That's all. That's obvious. But let's try to make her something. Let's make something for Lizzie. Lizzie's just trying to help me. She's just trying to help, okay? Saying his best bet was to try to encourage Lizzie's good nature, John set to working with the kitchen supplies she'd left nearby him. His options without a stove were limited, but he did his best to make her something that looked like real effort had been put into it. He was no chef, but he thought she would like anything he had made with his own hands. Strangely, the act of making something for her helped him forget about the fact that he was chained in the basement. The situation might be messed up, but perhaps there was a core or something salvageable. Uh, when Lizzie saw his gift, when Lizzie saw his gift, oh, she's not even here to like, okay. She blushed, then took it away hurriedly. John blinked, but didn't have time to object. The next time he saw her, she was beaming. Well, where is she? It's just like, I'm just looking at the scene. I want to see her. I want to see my boo. Though John spent all Saturday tense, Lindsay showed no signs of interrupting or intending to hurt him. That night, she brought a mattress down, uh, embedding down the basement, set it up close enough that he could lie down on it. When he woke up Sunday, he felt strangely normal. Still tense. The situation was far from ordinary, but in a strange way, he had learned to deal with it. Stockholm Syndrome, baby. I love her. That day passed almost normally. Since Lizzie had brought him his books, he tried to work through his homework. But like he often did on Sunday, Lizzie stayed with him most of the day working as well. She made meals for both of them in the basement and upstairs, but she always stayed close. He hoped for a chance to evaluate his options more, but never spotted one since she was always leaning in to smile at him from the stairwell. <laughs> She's always like, you still down there? Okay. Are you still down there? Yeah. How do I use the bathroom? Did she let me, did she take me to the bathroom? The only useful thing he learned was that the basement door was apparently unlocked, except at night. <laughs> if he could somehow get unchained from the table, he had a shot at getting out. When Monday dawned, he crashed almost immediately and didn't even get out of bed. That was common for vacations when he didn't have friends to distract him, since all he could do was wallow in himself. It felt worse than usual. His world wasn't just gray. His depression was filled with flecks of anger and confusion. Only then did he realize he hadn't taken any medication since Friday morning. When Lizzie entered that morning, she immediately saw how badly he was doing and rushed to the mattress, at first fussing with his sheets before realizing the problem went deeper than that. John, what's wrong? Other than you keeping me here? No, I'm sorry, no. If I let you go, you'll just hate me. It'll ruin everything. Then at least bring my, my Paxatine. It's in the shelf above the sink to the... No. No, I won't bring it to you. I can't. I destroyed it. What? But I need that. You understand how serious my condition is, right? I know, I really do. But you shouldn't take their drugs. Not theirs. Is she about to cure my depression? Is Lindsay... Lizzie, excuse me, called you the wrong name there. Don't be, don't, don't, don't hate me. Are you about to cure my depression through making me not take my, my antidepressants? Didn't they say early in the game that they're still being tested? Are they testing on me? But don't worry about, uh, don't worry about Lindsay. Lizzie, ah, <coughs> Lizzie, are you trying, are you, are you trying to help me? You were taking something before Paxteen, right? Tell me what it was. I'll go get some for you. I want you to get better, John, but I won't let you take anything from Koitech. What, what do I tell? What do I tell old Lizzie here? Side effect. Okay, S side effects from a strong antidepressant is actually causing more depression, for real. Uh, well, as someone that's taken antidepressants before, coming off of them sucks. When I was, I, 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 it's like years ago now. When I tell, when I was on some, I was on some for like, uh, like six months or something. But um, they make you feel. The ones I was on make you feel like nothing. It's very flat line, very gray, like it's explained in this game. So this game, I actually kind of understand a lot what this game's saying. And um, I got off of them. And it's like this weird, it's like a buzzing feeling or something in, in like, in your head. And then also like a high buzz at the same time. Like you just kind of feel like, like wistfully kind of. And it's it's not like a good feeling. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, uh, a vertigo feeling. Yeah, vertigo. Yeah, there's a lot of vertigo and kind of like this. If you move your head too fast, you're kind of like, woof. And uh, kind of a buzz. It, it, the, your hormones. It's, it's, some, it's some real stuff. Real, real serious stuff when you mess around with your hormones. Uh, okay, give me my old medication, baby. Take it back. I tried to remove the medication. These seemed to do no good. Maybe they weren't as good as Pax Team, but they would be better than nothing. Okay. Just wait right there. I don't... I don't 
Lindsay, I'm no, I'm no doctor, but I don't think swapping my drugs like this is gonna, it's gonna, oh man, it's gonna mess me up. Apparently, just remembering all the chemical names he listed, Lizzie hopped up the stairs and practically slammed the door in a hurry on her way out. Abrupt alone, John realized he had another chance to act. I'm gonna make something for Lizzie again. Since the previous dish he made had gone over so well when Lizzie left, John set out to make something else. Given his limitations, though, it's hard to not repeat himself. This one made Lizzie smile, but he thought he also saw something in her eyes. When she took the food, he thought he heard her whispering something about how romantic he was being. I'm wooing her. I'm wooing her. Eventually, Lizzie returned, bearing a large white sack. She triumphantly emptied it out on the table, dumping an entire pile of pills in front of him. She had gotten every drug he'd mentioned, even the prescription ones. He hated to think about the nasty consequences if she tried to give him all these at once. But instead, Lizzie just brought him a glass of water and sat down beside the pile. Take anything you need to get better, okay? I'll just leave these here, but you can ask for more water whenever you want. Thank you. Of course, John. I'm doing all this because I want you to get better. He felt like telling her that he's being held against his will wouldn't help. But her expression looked so sincere that he couldn't bring himself to say it. How had she gotten prescription medications anyway? He found that w one that had been most satisfying with uh, the one had been most satisfied with before Miss Smith switched him to uh, Paxitine and took his first dose. Lizzie smiled brightly, then skipped back up the stairs. After lunch on Tuesday, Lizzie started carrying electronics down the stairs. He blinked in confusion until she brought down the TV and started hooking everything together. Or at least attempting to. After a moment, she sighed and looked at him sheepishly. Do you know how this works? I can try to get it figured out. He got up and did his best to help. She had a pretty nice VCR. Oh man. This must really be like set back in the day. Talking about how she was born in the like the seventies. She has a pretty nice VCR. Nice. So I guess it's probably it's probably set early just to take out the fact of cell phones. That's what I'm thinking. Because cell phones kind of get you out of all these situations. Leading him to wonder why she had had it and didn't know how to put it together. It wasn't like someone else would have bought it for her. Do you not use this much? Never. I don't really watch television. Like, at all? No. She had seemed weirdly apathetic about a lot of things. But he had thought she just wasn't into pop culture. Yet now, something in her voice made him suspect it was something else entirely. What about music, then? I don't listen to music. Oh, really? What about books? Only nonfiction that seems useful. The rest all feel so pointless. Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. I see what's happening. Oh, what do you do for fun, then? She stared back at him so long, he was afraid she might just ignore the question. Oh, well, sorry, I, I... I do enjoy a few things now, thanks to you. I spent a lot of time collecting all those knives because I thought they would be useful, but now it's a little different. Now I can imagine myself protecting you. All the details about those grips, edges, they're not just details now. They interest me. So he'd given her an interest in knives. Fantastic. Anyway, I thought maybe I could enjoy a movie if I watched it with you. Is that okay? We might as well try. I've had it all put together for a while anyway. We can try it. Lisa brought a chair and sat down beside, and they watched the tape. He was grateful that she at least watched the movie instead of him. It was nothing at all like how watching a film with a girl is supposed to be, according to his friends. <laughs> Lizzie didn't seem remotely nervous during the scary parts, and to his surprise, didn't seem to care about the romantic parts. Then again, he didn't think he really would want her to react that way. It definitely wouldn't feel like who she was. He's still playing all the spooky music. So it's, it's basically just saying... Like, it's just, like, she doesn't have emotions is pretty much what we're getting at here. She, Because she said this earlier, that she, that she never, like, I don't know, she, I forget how she worried it, but she didn't really have feelings, and now she just wants some John, you know? I wonder what she was going to do with those knives originally. To his surprise, John found himself enjoying it, too. Maybe his old meds were doing their job better than he thought. When it finally ended, Lizzie gave a small smile that he thought represented authentic satisfaction. Then she immediately turned to him. We should watch something together again. But I think I'd rather make our own movie. Wah, 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 yeah, girl! His mind immediately flashed to making porn together. 
<laughs> it forced the thought away. Ha! <laughs> ha! Yeah! John knows! John gets me! Alright, John. What kind of movie? Uh, I would just like to film you. Here, working or eating or anything. I could watch it later. Really? Wouldn't that be boring? No, watching you can never be boring. Oh, this is such a good idea. I'll go buy one of those video recorders and... Not to cut you off, but wouldn't that be incriminating evidence? John. John! 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 Let her go and make a tape of you locked up, John! Wow, John! I was so happy. I thought you were so smart for a second, John. I was like, oh yeah, John, she's going to make some tapes. That way, people will know what happened to me when I'm dead. <sighs> but no. No. No, John. No, John. We're not going to have any proof. And you know what else? We're not even going to be able to make a porno now, because you're going to talk her out of that, too. God dang it, John. Useless. Fuck, what was he saying? Well, too late to go back now. I mean, it's not legal to hold someone like this, and your basement looks kind of suspicious. You wouldn't want someone to find it later. Oh, you care. Elysian embraced him cheerfully, and despite himself, John felt a flicker of joy. When she was happy, she seemed so purely happy. You're right, of course. I'm so glad you're thinking about keeping me safe. Even if I want it to be the other way around. John is so kind. But maybe later we can make our own movies. Okay? Okay? Uh, yeah, maybe. Why the hell had he just done that? Having a tape of her behavior would have been perfect way to get the police to take him seriously if he managed to escape. But as soon as he had that thought, John regretted it. He didn't want to see Lizzie hurt and hated the idea of her going to prison despite of what she was doing to him. Despite the situation, he still thought of her as a sweet girl who wasn't entirely well. She deserved help, not punishment. You're my, you're my crazy psycho waifu. It's okay. Was this Stockholm Syndrome? Was she wearing him down just like she planned to? The idea disturbed him, but it didn't change how he felt. He needed to find another way. On Wednesday, Lizzie wanted to watch another movie, but John suggested that might be too many. Instead, they passed the day quietly, working and chatting and ignoring the fact he was still changed the table. He was feeling better than he thought he could without Paxatine, so his mind shifted to what he could do to improve the situation. Chatting with Lizzie, Lizzie was... Uh, I keep wanting to say Lindsay. Lizzie was pleasant, but it wouldn't resolve that problem. But what should he say? Try to leverage the last few friendly days into her letting him go? Just try to make her relax more or convince her that he wouldn't leave her. Uh, so, Lizzie. Oh, girl? Girl, you want to talk about some romance? Girl, let me, mm, let's, let's start a conversation about romance. You know, earlier you said that you didn't do too much for fun before. Uh, but I'm not so sure that's true. You seem to spend an awful lot of time imagining us being together. Dates and everything else. Mm, yes. I've dreamt so many times of our first, well, uh, first everything, and not just our firsts. Our second times will be wonderful too, and we'll just get closer and closer together until no one can take us apart. I don't think I've ever heard you mention marriage, though. Oh, of course I want to get married, but I didn't want to mention it because I've read that that can scare away boys. But, oh yes, I've imagined it so much. We should use one of those old cathedrals and I can wear a beautiful white dress. And the pictures will have a perfect picture of us in our wedding day we can keep forever and ever. Who are you imagining attending this wedding? Does there need to be anyone else? I'm pretty sure you need at least one person there to do the actual marrying. Or it doesn't count legally. Hmm, yes. I suppose we need to have that person and someone to take the photos. And it's okay if you want to invite people from your family, I guess. I don't really care about them. Uh, honestly, no. I'm not sure I have anyone who would come. Oh, John, don't feel bad. I don't have any family members to attend either. We'll make our own family, won't we? We won't need to care about anyone else. For the rest of the day, Lizzie was floating on a cloud of positive emotions. When she gazed at him adoringly, John found himself smiling back. Oh, you changed clothes. You only have two outfits, apparently. Oh, it's the outfit you were wearing before you came at me with an axe. How beautiful. <sighs> the next morning, he took his pills and a glass of water as usual. Lizzie waited until he was done and then gave him a warm smile. I 
hope it's helping. You seem happier, John. I wonder if she just went and gave me a bunch of, like, fake pills, you know? Like, they're just, ah, nah, nah. And I just, I just think that I'm getting better. I feel better than I expected. Pretty good, actually. It was actually strange how good he felt. It was easier not to think about that moment. Instead, he brought up an issue they've been, been thinking about for a while. That reminds me. I've been meaning to ask you. You've run out of Nilazine, right? I haven't taken it for days. I destroyed the rest of it the day before our date. You destroyed it? Why? It was useful. It helped me to under it helped me understand. But I wasn't myself while I was taking it. I wish you'd re reconsider taking medication. We can't handle every situation, everything ourselves. Sometimes we need help. You don't understand. It's not that simple. Then explain it to me. I wasn't myself. It was like someone had imprisoned me and took my place. Imagine. Imagine if your own medication meant that you could never feel sad again. Just constant manic happiness. That does sound horrible. I'm sorry I made you take it. Don't say that. It was useful. Having things be different for a while made it easier to see how everything fits together. I couldn't take any longer than that. I want to be myself again. Koetic doesn't want to help people, John. They just want to control them. Are we about to get into one of those, like, sheep arguments? To where we're all sheep taking medicine and whatnot? Uh, are you just saying that metaphorically? Or do you actually know something about them? No. No? Abby was abducted because of them... I never cared about her, but I saw what Ko Koetic drugs did to her. They didn't change who she was. She was always horrible. The drugs made her identity obvious. Not like you, John. You're still so kind, even though you were taking that drug. But they won't be satisfied with that. Are you seriously saying Koetic is some kind of a conspiracy? Conspiracy? No, I don't think so. They just want money, and they're willing to cut corners to make it. I don't care what they do to anyone else, but you need to stop taking that drug. You need to see clearly. You almost wanted to believe her. Koitek was a huge company, and those weren't exactly known for their ethics. It was plausible that he had been testing some dangerous drugs on Lizzie's mother, uh, that they had been doing so. It had probably been too dangerous for adults, but had, had magnified impacts on a developing child. Did Lizzie see that on some level, or was she just paranoid about that company? Sometimes she seemed so... And you should stop seeing Ms. Smythe. She's trying to steal you away, I'm sure of it. Uh, Lizzie, don't be ridiculous. She's ten years older than me and the school counselor. I can't trust her. You can't. You shouldn't. Calm down. No one's going to steal me away. She stared at him if she desperately wanted to believe his words. A moment later, she gave an odd little half shrug. I came in to say I need to run some errands today. So I'll leave you alone, okay? John? Yeah, sure. She left the room and John knew he had a rare opportunity, but he found himself sitting and thinking. Was it possible that she was right about Paxatine? He hadn't taken it in several days, and after a few low points, he actually felt much better than usual. The terrible irony of depression medication was that sometimes a drug can make you feel even worse, not better. Maybe the changes he attributed to Paxatine were just changes in his life. Uh, could be anything of the conspiracy theory, but he could believe that Koitek would push their drug on anyone with depression even if it had mixed results. Things like that happen all the time. Well, I mean, the, my problem I have with the prescriptions in this game is that he literally went to a pharmacy and was like, hey, my friend's kind of having trouble. And he's like, and this, like, this game, just, just giving out medicine. It's like, if it, if it wasn't a prescription medicine, he probably would just gave it to him. I mean, I mean, of course, not prescribed, but the way they were talking about it is that they were non-prescription drugs for depression and such. And that doesn't seem very true. Abruptly, he resolved that if he made it out of the basement, he'd stop taking Paxton as an experiment. He could say, stay on his old meds and see if it, he did better. If he actually showed signs of improvement, even Miss Smythe would ha be happy to let him uh, take older drugs. Regardless for now, he needed to take stock in his options and take some kind of action while he had the opportunity and energy to do it. He felt like he'd spent too much time thinking to make an escape attempt. But he could accomplish something else. Girl, I am so god dang romantic. Lizzie, I'm making something for you, okay? Since the previous dish he'd made gone over so well, he left John to make something, give his limitations though, and I'd repeat himself, smile, 
Uh, this one made Lizzie smile, but he thought he also saw something in her eyes. The food he heard whispering how romantic he was being. So I just got the same result. On Friday, John woke up, stretched, yawned, stretched the shackle on his leg, and got up to brush his teeth. It was only while brushing his teeth and staring at the walls and the knives he realized how normal this bizarre situation had become. One week ago, Lizzie had been asking him out on a date, and they had gone out like a normal couple. It felt like a lifetime ago. When he heard the basement door open, he didn't even glance up. He knew it would be Lizzie again. He just rinsed out his mouth and, uh-oh. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. You look at her when she comes in the room, John. She's about to jump scare me. Happy, come here. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Can you believe it's been one week already? I was just thinking that, actually. Has it been wonderful? We've been together every single day. Ah, oh, it's bliss. You know, we haven't done anything that we couldn't have done without the kidnapping. But that's the point. She skipped and passed him. To the wall of knives, Lizzie held her arms behind her back as she examined them eagerly. When we were together at school, part of me was afraid. We were both pretending. Even when we were alone, I wasn't myself. Oh, God. Lizzie chose a knife from the wall, caressing his head slowly before taking it up. She turned to him, eyes unnaturally bright. A normal boy couldn't have done all those ordinary things with me after seeing the truth. You're saying I'm not normal? And I wouldn't want you to be. She came closer, the knife swaying back and forth as her gaze remained fixated on him. She was close now, close enough that she could have kissed him or stabbed him. I want you to learn that you shouldn't be afraid of me. You know I'd never pick up a knife to hurt you, right? I... I wanted an answer. Girl. Girl, you ready for this? You ready, baby cakes? You ready, girl? Here it comes, baby! Instead of answering a question that might not have been any good answer, John leaned forward and kissed her gently. <laughs> What's up, girl? She gave a surprised gasp, kissed back for a moment, then suddenly pulled back. John, why did you kiss me? Isn't that what you want? Yes, exactly what I want. You've been giving me exactly what I want. Oh, no, she's on to me. She's on to me, boys! She's on to me! Oh, no! Happy! Happy! She knows! She knows I've been playing her! Oh, God! <laughs> oh, Jesus! Oh. Oh, girl. Yeah, I've been giving you exactly what you want, baby. Oh, yes. Ah, this... This isn't right. I've ruined it. I've ruined everything. Lizzie, what are you talking about? You thought you needed to manipulate me, didn't you? Play with my feelings so I wouldn't hurt you. This is all my fault. I drove you to this. Lizzie rushed out of the room and slammed the door behind her. Oh, Lizzie. Oh, Lizzie, Liz Lizzie. Come on, girl. Come on back. Come on, let me give you some more kisses, baby. When she returned later in the day, she pretended like the kiss never happened. John did the same, but she couldn't help but feel like something was different. Or he couldn't help but feel that way. On Saturday, Lizzie announced that she wanted to make a huge meal for both of them on the last day. She asked what he wanted to eat, then heading out, then, he then headed out for a shopping trip. As soon as he was surely she was actually gone, John took a deep breath. He didn't have much time left before the vacation was over. But... What do you want to do? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do anything. John considered a lot, a lot of options. They all felt futile. He was basically in Lizzie's power, so he might as well accept it. He tried to find a more comfortable position and slumped in his chair. Leaning against the back and could stare at the basement ceiling. All he could do now is hope that she would decide to let him go. Maybe there'd be something he could do to encourage that, but at the moment, he had no energy to think. For now, all he could do was wait. Everything was in its place, including him slumped down in the chair. He could only hope that he had done enough. They waited in silence while Lizzie went upstairs, putting away what she had bought. Eventually heard the door open, and she skipped down the stairs with a smile. John, how are you? Dot, dot, dot. I'm going to let you go tomorrow. Really? You aren't worried I'll tell someone? I am. If you told someone, it hurt me so much. But I can't hold you here forever. I want to keep you here forever. 
but I want you to choose to stay with me even more. That would be best. I see. You're not happy. After all this, do you really expect my emotions to be so simple? Do you hate me? No, I don't think so. That is good, but I want more than that. I know, we're gonna have to wait. You can't rush a relationship by forcing it. I know. Next time, you can choose when to ask me out, okay? Okay. All right. He remained, there, his remaining time in the basement passed easily, almost casually. They didn't speak much about what was coming and especially not about what had happened. They watched two more movies, chatted about simple things, finished up the last of their vacation and homework. And on Sunday, Lizzie appeared in silence and locked the chain that kept him bound to the table. He stared at her and wished he could find something to say, but his mouth was too dry to speak. Eventually he left. He thought he might have seen a glimmer of tears in her eyes, but it might have been his imagination. The entire ride back, he tried to think about his experiences, but couldn't even begin to grasp everything that happened. When John got home, he found the door undamaged. The entire house didn't look so different as if it hasn't been abandoned for nine days. There's only a single message on the answer machine. His father saying that he was going on a uh, company vacation. He hadn't even noticed that John was gone. None of his friends had called. He'd been taken out of the world and no one even noticed. The only person who had cared was Lizzie, but she wasn't there with him now, and there was still too many emotions to sort through with her. John sat down on the couch and simply felt numb. He fell asleep there. An uncertain amount of time later, he slept and did not dream. In the morning, John felt surprisingly refreshed. He made sure to take the meds that Lizzie had sent with him, since they seemed to have worked well so far. When he went to school... He would have to ask Miss Smythe her options, her, her opinion. But despite the absurdity of it all, they were still going to have to go to school. Lizzie wasn't waiting for him outside his house, which was probably a good thing, he decided. The walk to school and the crisp air gave him time to focus. Not that he reached any profound conclusions, but by the time he reached the school, he at least felt reasonably okay. He didn't spot Lizzie at all. But when he opened his locker, he discovered a folded note in the center. Ooh, King, come here at me. Is she mad at me? Good morning, John. It said, good morning, John, surrounded by hearts. Despite himself, John smiled a little. When he looked up, he saw Lindsay around the nearby corner, and she smiled back before vanishing. He drifted through several classes. Today, he wasn't too different. Today... He wasn't too different from the other students since they were all back from vacation and unfocused. None of the teachers tried to make them do too much. After school, he headed to Miss Smythe's office, not entirely sure what he was going to say. After so long, anyway. However, he definitely felt like he could use some counseling. Oh, John, I hope you had a good vacation. It was okay. You? Spent the entire time working, I'm afraid. I actually tried to call you, but it seems you weren't home. Yeah, I was busy, sorry. Oh, it's fine. I just hope you haven't lost any of our progress. Why don't you lie down so we can get started right away? He got on the couch, but things didn't go as smoothly as usual. Miss Smythe was doing her best, but he just couldn't concentrate. It didn't take a genius to know the reason. He needed to decide exactly what he was going to do. If he wanted protection from the police, this would be his best chance to ask for it secretly. Or even if he skipped some details, Miss Smythe might be able to provide help of some kind. Or maybe he shouldn't tell her anything. It all worked out for the best, hadn't it? Something on your mind, John? I think I'm actually kind of okay with it. <laughs> I think I'm kind of cool with it, you know? Look, I need my boo, all right? I need my boo, and you ain't trying to give me nothing. I don't know. The vacation was weird. I felt okay. Not great, but okay. Were you able to take a trip with your family? A change of scene might have done you some good. No, we didn't do anything, but I guess a few things have changed for me lately. Maybe you're right. Apparently, Miss Smythe thought he was doing better because she ended their session fairly early to let him go home. On his way out, he spotted Lizzie watching him from the shadows. He smiled at her, and she smiled back. But that was all. And for now, that was enough. So they started walking. <laughs>